So now we've seen uh, some of the impact over the last handful of sessions here of what pain does to us. I, I think all of us are surprised by that. All right, no, none of us really realize how much pain and sin against us has a deep impact on us and, and how our view of the world is impacted by that. And we want to continue to look more and more on how that pain and its impact on us continues to show up in relationships and begin to interpret and see how each other's pain shows up as we try to relate to one another. And one of the things I think is so important for us to get a hold of is as we are relating to one another in the midst of our own pain and our own sin, um, Satan has an agenda that, that we mentioned earlier that he has always uh, tried to fight to uh, divide people, to destroy people. That's his primary agenda is through um, destroying and dividing relationships. So when you think about it from really Satan's perspective, if he's trying to deconstruct the work of God in people's lives, uh, why not target things like the basic unit of society, the family, right, and to break up marriages, to break up parents from their children, and, and to break up uh, relationships at work, at church, and to build a tension and accusation in those relationships. So oftentimes we fail to see that, that aspect of conflict, to, to sometimes even when we're looking at our relationships with each other and we're frustrated with the other person, it's sometimes difficult to see that there's another agenda that's playing on behind the scenes. Sometimes my wife and I will do this. When we're at, e at each other's throats about something or we're, we're fighting a, about something, we'll look at each other and say, this is really not, it's not really what it's about what we're fighting right now, right? There maybe is a big teaching coming up or there's something that's significant. And what we sort of realize is there's another agenda playing out. We're not really mad at each other as much as um, we're he hearing accusatory thoughts in our minds about one another, that there's a spiritual agent that's playing out, trying to divide uh, our relationship. And guys, that is happening all the time. Uh, actually, you can be pretty confident that if there is, if there is a, a potential outcome of division, that Satan's involved, that that is his agenda and really his, his war strategy. So those pieces especially, division, um, accusation, and really destruction of relationships are going to be primary ways that Satan uses uh, to fight against relationship. And you can know that that's part of the spiritual strategy uh, that's playing on kind of playing out behind the scenes. So we want to have that in mind. And that's why Paul will tell us in Ephesians 6 that our war or our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against each other, but it's against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That, that it's, it's satanic in nature when, when we uh, refuse to figure it out together, refuse to break through this conflict. And so I need to know that, to know that this person, my boss, my coworker, my friend at church, my life group leader, my pastor, whoever, right, my son or daughter, these people are not my problem. There's a spiritual problem that's playing out behind the scenes, and that's actually the primary issue. Uh, so our, our unity in Jesus, for Christ followers specifically, is going to help us to work that stuff through, and our commitment to godliness is going to help us in any relationship to really fight for that peace uh, that we've talked about before. So what do I do when, I, when I'm sinned against, right, and I, I start to have this play out, how do I deal with that? I think a great verse to have in the back of my mind comes out of 1 Peter, uh, where it says that love covers over a multitude of sins, right? So when I'm sinned against, I want to look at this other human being, knowing that there's a, a satanic plan that's playing out to cause us to, to be in conflict and in tension with one another, and I want to give that person the benefit of the doubt. And there's some sins that really play out in our lives that, that we can just roll off our back and just say, it's no big deal. I can forgive this. I can let it go. And that's it, right? Maybe that person didn't mean it. Maybe they were looking across the room. They weren't ignoring me, right? Maybe I can just give them some benefit of the doubt and I don't have to move towards them to resolve a conflict. It's more, it's more my own issue that I have to work through. Now, sometimes there's sins that, are, are, that come against us that are more, um, they're more impactful and uh, I, I can try to ignore it or I can try to just deal with it myself, but the reality is uh, maybe it's too much and I actually have to talk to the person about it and, and bring that sin in front of them in the way that Matthew 18 talks about. In Matthew 18, uh, Matthew lays out a process, actually Jesus teaches us this, that uh, we want to go directly to uh, the source of where this sin is happening. We're going to start with a one-on-one -on -one interaction. 
And, and if you're meeting with a, a, a disciple or in a group or in a classroom setting, I encourage you to talk this through. If you're in a situation like this, you can really play it out and, and give details about what's happening and get guidance on how to interact. But, but start one-on-one. -on -one. I, I want to look at this hurt and I want to bring it to you, the source of the, the person that's hurting me, and let's begin to resolve this conflict together. I think some practical ideas about how to do that are asking somebody to sit down and asking them to hear your heart and say that, man, I want to talk to you about something that, that's been difficult and I want to be honest and I care about you. And I think from a heart perspective, I want to show up in that meeting and care as much about that person as I do my own pain. Right? I want them to know that I care about them and it's not just about my pain. We know that pain is selfish, so I have to push past that and look at the other person help them to know that I care about our relationship. Uh, Pastor Bob taught me this. He, he told me that right. I always want to show up with tears in my eyes when I'm in a, a confrontational situation. So I, I want to show up and care from the heart that this relationship's resolved, this person's on a healthy track, and then I, in a humble, a gentle, and an honest way, uh, communicate uh, right, right, the sin that's happened against me. And say, man, th this is what's happened. This is the interaction that played out and I need you to know this, this hurt, and can we talk about it? And then if that doesn't work, if that doesn't solve the, the conversation, Matthew 18 would lead us down a farther process, which I'd encourage you to dig into and look at a little bit deeper. But at the end of the day, the answer is, I want to move towards healing in this relationship. That, that there's this deeper strategy from Satan's perspective that's playing out. We know that God also has a strategy where he wants to help us to work through these conflicts. He uses conflicts and trials to mature us. That's just part of what it is. It's part of life here on earth in a fallen world is working through those conflicts and trials and, and kind of uh, pieces and experiences of pain. When, when I have to work that through, I become more like Jesus. That's how I learn to use, utilize the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy, peace, patience. All the, the fruit of the Spirit is played out relationally. Well, I do that in the midst of pain, right? That's when I have to exercise the fruit of the Spirit and actually become more like Jesus in the process, which is amazing. So I want to be able to see the spiritual side of it, Satan's agenda in it, God's agenda in it, know that God means it for good, even if, even if Satan means it for evil, even if the person meant it for evil. I can look past that, uh, forgive that, and move towards a peacemaking relationship with them as the Bible lays out, loving them and wanting them to win as much as I want my own pain to be healed. And those are some definite aspects of interpreting conflict that I want to have in mind. Knowing the whole picture helps me to be kind of sane in it. Uh, one of the biggest things that happens is my emotions take over, lose perspective, and just see the person as the problem. We know at the end of the day that, that the other person, the other side of the conflict isn't the issue. It's God's agenda and the enemy's agenda at war with one another. We're in the midst of that battlefield, and it's critical to the advancement of God's work that we find peace in the midst of that, that we get above it, that we work through it, get over our own pain, and move towards harmony as God would have us have it. And, and I think interpreting conflict has to have all those pieces in mind, and what's encouraging is uh, we don't have to get locked into considering other people dead to us, throwing them away, viewing relationships disposably uh, in the way that, that many relationships play out because of our faith in Jesus Christ, we can actually have peace with one another and begin to see healing happen at levels maybe we never have before. That's exciting.